Wayatin, Leka, Et, Berakat, Avraham, Leka, Yule Zaraka, Itak, Li Nishtika, Et, Eretz, Megureki, Megureki, Rika, Megurika. That's what I was trying to say. Asher. Nathan, Elohim, Lehavraham. <coughs> and he may give to you et is what? The sign of the direct object. Page 84. A blessing. Berkat, a blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed. And now we talked about the basic rules of biblical interpretation this morning, didn't we? Some of you. Brother Abe, you were here. Uh, Roger, you were here. And Cindy, you missed out. Uh, but you know what they are anyway, don't you? All right. What's the rules of basic biblical interpretation? Who's speaking? Who's he speaking to? And what's the subject? Who, what, where, when, and why? Yep. That's what they teach you in school. But if you just get the idea of who's speaking, who's he speaking to, and what's the subject, you've got it made. Okay? You got it made. Now, uh, let's look what we're talking about here. Now, let's go back in your Bibles and let's catch up to where we are. Sharon, would you come up here and read about three verses up to where we are. Would you mind doing that so you can read that into the microphone? Starting at 28. Uh, yeah, at, uh, tw okay. yeah, 28. Okay. Chapter 28 and verse 1. Okay. All right. Whichever direction you want to get, <laughs> but right into that microphone. Okay. So it'll record you. Does it make me nervous? <laughs> oh, I don't want to make you nervous. It's just watching you all over the world. Hi, world. <laughs> so Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padam Aran, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel, and take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien, the land God gave to Abraham. All right, thank you very much. So there's where we are. Now we've caught up. All right, Isaac is blessing Jacob, and he's telling him that he's going to pass on the blessing of Abraham. The Abrahamic promise is going to go not to Esau, but to Jacob. All right, there's where we go. Look on the chart up there. See the chart? Look back over there to where we have the age of the promise. The Abrahamic promise. That's where Israel is going to begin. Of course, Israel is going to be Jacob. Jacob's name is going to be turned into, into Israel. All right? And Israel means what? Israel. Israel. What does that mean? God's chosen. Huh? God's chosen. Well, it means massel, ra, man that wrestles with God. The man that wrestles with God. All right, the man that wrestled with God, and he succeeded. And may he give to you a blessing of Abraham. The Abrahamic promise is passed on to you and to your seeds. All right, his seeds with you for your possession to inherit. All right, to inherit, to be for your possession, land. Uh, with your wanderings, or from your wanderings, however you want to look at it, which he had given, which he had given Elohim to Abraham. He had already given this land to Abraham. All right, 28 and verse 5 now, 28 and verse 5. Why Yishlah, Yitchak, Et, Yaakov, Why Yelik, Padina, Aram, El, Laban, Ben, Bethuel, all right, Ha, Ah, 
Raw me. Aki. Ravka. M. Gotta go over here to B. Yaakov. We Esau. All right. And he sent away Isaac, Jacob. All right. And he went to Padan. All right. Now, what does Padan mean? Remember? Come on, come on. This is a test. You remember, uh, Chris? You remember what Padan means? Sharing? Yeah, I want to say like a, it's not a meadow, but kind of a grassland. A grassland. A prairie. Yeah. A, a grassland. Back in. Mankind can really mess up land. Did you know that? Mankind can really mess up land. We've talked about that a little bit. Back in Kansas and Oklahoma and uh, Texas and many places back there, Nebraska, this was all land that God gave to the Indians and to the buffalo. Okay? And it was grassland. And the grass was very deep in the land. It had roots very deep. Well, they went there with plows, and the plows would cut out a strip of, of uh, a sod about this wide and about this deep, and they would build sod houses out of it, and then they would plant the land, and they would grow gardens, and they'd grow wheat, and all kinds of stuff, and of course, they displaced the buffalo. The American government, in 1800, there were about 100 million buffalo in America. The American government gave every shot and powder and bullets to anybody that would kill buffalo because the buffalo were in the way of their progress. The buffalo were the food of the Indians. Well, when all of this happened, after all of this took place and the deaf buffalo were almost brought to extinction except for a small herd and the Indians were brought under control because they were starving to death, what happened to the land? What happened? What was the result of that? Now, this is grassland like that, too. What happened to it? Erosion. We have the Great Dust Bowl days. The Great Dust Bowl. In Owens Valley, when they took all the water and shipped it down into L.A., well, the L.A. aqueducts that they run, they've got two aqueducts running down there, and they dried all that up. We have 2% of all the dust borne pollution in the world right up there because of that. It changed the complete environment. The water, the transpiration of water out of the land and out of the, the, the grasslands, the coin dust lands. Right here we have a land that is absolutely filled with grasslands. Land that many animals can grow on. All right? And that's what this land is. This was God's land. This was grassland, grazing land. In Oklahoma and Texas, they were millions of buffalo in Kansas. The big buffalo water, some places are still out there where water would come up and seep. There were springs out there, and the buffalo would waller in that, and you can still see the buffaloes. The buffalo are gone, but the buffalo wallows are still there. I guess they are. The last time I was there, they were there. This is the grassland that we're talking about. This is grassland. That's what Padan means, the grasslands. The deep rooted grasslands that will support animals of a ram. Now, what is a ram? Huh? <laughs> what do they call those? The, there's a team that's called Rams. The, what is it? The St. Louis Rams. All right. Ram, a ram. Well, that's not what it's talking about. This is the grasslands of Syria because there were streams and, and rivers out there. And I've been there, too. And there's still a lot of water out there and a lot of grasslands. They have plowed some of it and everything else, but there are still a lot of natural grassland. These people follow grass. If, if you have seen that movie that I've shown in my classes, Grass, where they followed the grass, that's exactly how they did. They followed the grass. And then now we got a little bit of a background of where Jacob is going. He's going to the grassland. He's going to a place where he can make a lot of money in his cattle business and his sheep and goat business. All right? Just recently, how many of you ever go out Taft Highway? 
Right there at Gosford and Taft Highway, there's an old place out there with gobs and gobs of old machinery out there, and there's some white cattle out there that has spots on them. They are Jacob's cattle. Those cattle can trace their DNA right back to this place right here. Literally, those are Jacob's cattle. Now, you have probably seen some of Jacob's cattle in, in, in the bull rings and the bomber bomber bulls because they cross them and they make bucking bulls out of them. That old man out there, he's a crippled old guy, and he's still got some cattle out there, but those bulls, many of those famous bucking bulls come from right there, and those are Jacob's cattle. They will be white, and when they're wet, you will see spots on them, the spotted cattle. Right out there, that's where they come from. This is the background right here. Those cattle, the DNA comes from right here in Syria and the Middle East and Palestine. Padan Aram, unto Laban. And what does Laban mean? Whitey. Whitey. All right, unto Whitey. All right. Um, yes. It was unusual. Very unusual. Unusual. They were either white or black. The speckled cattle and even the black. How many of you have gone out and seen uh, herds of sheep, great flocks of sheep? How many, how many black ones? One in a hundred or one in a thousand? Now these were would turn out to be all the speckled ones and all the spotted ones and all the black ones would become Jacob's cattle. And these cattle go all the way back. God did something to them. Now we're jumping ahead a little bit. Okay? But he did something. He was the boss of the plains. He really figured out who was going to. They had more black ones. And this was very rare. One to a hundred, one to a thousand. Unlabeled son of Bethuel. All right, Bethuel. Basically, that means house of God. House belonging to God. They are a Aramean. Or the Syrian. Brother of Rebekah. Rebekah. And what does Rebecca mean? To captivate, to halter, to lasso. Okay? Jacob and Esau. Jacob means what? To follow the heel. And Esau means? Harry. Old stinker himself. Old Harry stinker. Okay. 28 and verse 6 now. 28 and verse 6. By the way, these blessings were final and irrevocable. Jacob would live and prosper no matter what Esau did. Wayar. Esau. Key. Barak. Yitchak. Et. Yaakov. Wishelah. Otah. Padinah. Aram, Likachat, Lo, Mishsham, Isha, Bivaraka, Ota, Watsa, Allah, Lemor, Lo, Tika, Isha, Mibonot Canaan. If those kids get to running up now, Roger, can you go out there and tell them that we're having a class in here, please? That way they'll at least know we're in here. They may think this place is wide open for shenanigans. <laughs> All right. Why are? All right. That comes from Yar. Uh, that is the uh, <coughs> the root of it. And saw and kept on seeing Esau that had blessed. That had blessed. Look at that word. Third person master singular PL and perfect. That had intensely blessed Isaac at Jacob. And he sent away. And he sent away. Or he had sent away, literally, because this third person masculine singular PL perfect. He had sent away. That comes from shalak. See that word there? Shalak. See the three letter root? 
him to Padan. That means a plain or the grassland. Get the idea of the grassland. I want you to see that grassland. Pristine virgin grassland, okay? Of Syria or Aram. To take for himself from there a ish shah. It's actually ish shah. Do you see that little bit in the middle of that shin? That means it's doubled. All right? Ish shah. Say ish shah. All right. And his blessing. Look at that word. PL infinitive construct. And in his to be a blessing. Him. And he had commanded. Look at that word, third person masculine, singular, PL, wow, consecutive, and perfect. And he had continued to uh, command him, upon him, look at that word, Allah, upon him. See that word all in there? Ayan and Lamet, upon him, saying, adverb of negation, that word low there. Page 511 in Kohler and Bumgartner, if you want to look that up. You shall take, not you shall take, not you shall take and keep. Second person masculine, the singular, cow, imperfect. Uh, isha, a woman or a wife. From daughters of Kaanan. Kaanan. Of Kaanan. All right, that means gotten or possession. This is that land, the cursed people. The cursed people. Why did they not want them to take a daughter from the land of Canaan? You have to go back into Genesis, into the blessing that Noah and the curse of Noah. Noah cursed through Jehovah. He cursed these people. Canaan. Cain, you know. Canaan. They were the cursed people. They would become a very, very bad people. They would become a very immoral people a very diseased people. They would have, we know now, uh, medically and historically, that they had all types of venereal disease among the animals and the people. Terrible diseases. And diseases that would keep them from multiplying. Among them also were the Nephilim, the fallen ones. Yishma. Yaakov, El Avai, Wiel, Emo, Wayelek, Padina, Aram. And he had listened and kept on listening. And he had listened and kept on listening. Third person, mass and singular, Cal, Wow, consecutive, and perfect, Jacob, unto his father. He listened. What an unusual thing. He listened to his daddy. He listened. Not only in that word listen, what else is in that word? That word means to obey also. He listened and obey. Jesus said, if you love me, what? Obey my words. He loved his father and he loved his mother and he obeyed what they said. And listened unto Jacob, his father. El Avi, and unto his mama, and he had walked and kept on walking to Padan Aram. He left. He never been there before. How how far is this now from where he is? Four hundred miles. Four hundred miles by foot leather. Four hundred miles by footsteps. Four hundred miles. How far is that now? Is it about 400 miles almost to uh, what? L.A. to San Francisco. That's a lot of walking people. And I'm going to tell you something. There was a lot of rivers to cross and a lot of mountains to cross in that area by foot. And a lot of thieves on the way too, full of thieves. So he had got, asked God to bless him so that he would be safe. Why are Esau, Ki, wrote. Look at that word Ra in there. Ra, Ra is evil. Benot, Canaan, Bene, Yitchak, Avi. 
And he kept on seeing Esau because evil, the daughters of Canaan, in eyes of Isaac, his father. He kept on seeing that it was evil, the daughters of Canaan, in the eyes of his father Isaac, Yitchek. What does Yitchek mean? Huh? Laughter, but it means pleasure. 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 I want you to get the idea that his name meant pleasure. When you laugh, you, it is pleasure. When you kiss, it's pleasure. All of that, all of intimate relationships, all right? Laugh, kiss, hug, uh, all of that is in this word, okay? Wayelech, Esau, El, Yishmael, Wayika, Et, Mahalath, Bot, Yishmael, Ben, Avraham, Achot, Nevayot, Al, Nasha, Lo, Leisha. All right. Now, what's he do here? Who became the parents of the Canaanites and all the Arab people today? Who were the parents of them? What is the ancestry of them? What? Ham, well, Canaan, 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 Cain, Ten, Canaan. All right, and we have Ishmael, and then we're going to have Isaac, Esau. These are the ones, and then Lot, and who else? Lot is the Moabites and the what were the two daughters of Lot? I mean, the two daughters that had the two sons. Moab, all right, and Ami, and Ammon. Moab means what? Water from the Father. What does Ami mean? People of my people. In other words, they had incest with their father, and they had brought these incestuous people. This is the people that are populating the land. These are the ones, all crossbred and everything. Okay, this is where they come from. And went out Esau unto Ishmael. And of course Ishmael's dead, you know, by this time. He's not there. The family of Ishmael. Ishmael had been dead for 14 years at this time, okay? And he took and kept on taking Mahalot, base mess daughter, okay, of Ishmael and son of Abraham's sister, Nebioth, all right? in addition to wives to him for a wife. Esau did not respect his mother and father. No matter how much his father loved him, he was not worthy of the blessing. This is not God's man. This is not God's man. All right. God said in the Malachi 1 and verse 2 what? Malachi 1 and verse 2. Malachi. The last book in the Old Testament. And this ought to mean something. The last book in the Old Testament. Malachi 1 and 2. Cindy, are you there? Malachi 1 and 2. Can you bounce up here just quickly and bounce right into this microphone? Yeah, just Malachi 1 and verse 2. 1, 1 and 2. You can read both of them. Just get real. The burden or oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, yet you say, How and in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Yes, or says the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. Okay. All right. Esau and Jacob were brothers, but he loved Jacob, not Esau. All right. And then in the New Testament, Paul said, what? Esau I hated, and Jacob I loved. 28 and verse 10. Why Yitzhak, Yaakov, Meber, Shabbat, Why Yelech, 
Harana. Okay. And he went out, Jacob, from Beer. What does Beer mean? What's Beer? Remember? Page 92 is where you look it up in the book. What? It means spring or well, flowing water well or spring. This is a spring or a fountain, a fountain, water that flows from Shiva. Shiva means what? Remember what Shiva means? Shiva. Be'er Shiva. The well or the spring of the oath. Have, how many of you ever been to a, a, a place where, where a creek begins? Have you ever been to a creek? Or, Cindy, it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely, it'll be on that side, there's nothing. And right here, water starts flowing, flowing out of the ground. And there on, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger. All the way down. Up on the White Mountains, there's a place up there I used to go up, uh, what they called uh, the old Roberts Ranch. And uh, there was a creek up there. And right there at Roberts Ranch is where the creek began. And watercress would be all over the place. And right out of the ground was, was where this creek began, and it flowed on down there. And that creek and Crooked Creek would go together. Wyman Creek and Crooked Creek would go together, and it would become a little roaring creek down there. It just ran out of the ground. I've been to the headwaters of that one, and I've been to the headwaters of Cottonwood Creek in the White Mountains, where the water just began to run out of the ground. All right, Beersheba was a place where the water ran out, and this was the place of the oath, and went out to Haran, all right? The well of the oath and went into Haran. Haran. 28 and verse 11. Wayifka, Wayifga, Hamagom, Wayilin, Shem, Ki, Ba, Hashemesh, Wayika, We are Veni, Hamagom, Why? Yeshim Mira Ashto Wayishka Ba Makom Hahu Are you enjoying this language a little bit? Learn how to say something? I mean, if you look at the words long enough, you'll begin to be able to look at it and be able to pronounce them. Okay? And it happened, and it encountered. The root of this uh, uh, down here, uh, see the little uh, three-letter root down there? All right. And it happened, or it, it, uh, uh, he en encountered, or he met, in a place, in place, look at that word, that little preposition, bath in there, in a place, magom, and he spent night. He rubbed out the night. He lodged there. He remained. He rubbed out the night. Brother Hubbard used to say he rubbed out time. How many of you, ever, how many of you just uh, uh, whittled away time sometimes? You were someplace and you just had to waste some time. He rubbed out time in this place. Rubbed it out there. Because he had, uh, he had come or uh, set the sun. The sun had set, Ha Shemesh, the sun had set. And he took from stones the place, and he placed at his head. All right, he placed at his head. <coughs> he placed at his head. And he lay down. In place of the that. And he laid down and kept on laying down in that place. And he was hypnotized by God. Hypnotized. He had a hypnos hypnotic experience. Many times in history, God deals with man in hypnose. Hypnose. That's the Greek word. <laughs> I 
All my pencils are gone. <laughs> All my markers are gone. Even my eraser is gone. <coughs> well, I have to find that somewhere. I don't know what in the world they did with those. Uh, hip no say. Hip no say is like this. Hip no say. All right. Hip no say. We got to work hypnosis out of that. It means to uh, cast a, uh, a dream upon. Is that where they were? All right, Cindy, you're a wonder girl. I know. My favorite girl. I know. I should be. I should be. <laughs> I should be your favorite girl. Hip. No. Say. All right, now you can see it. And it has a, that's a epsilon there. Now this is Greek. Teaching you a little bit of Greek with Hebrew too. Hypnose. We get our word hypnosis right out of this Greek word right here. Okay. So God put him in in a hypnotic dream or a hypnotic trance, and he saw some things. Let's see what he saw. Wayachalom. All right. That comes from the same word. Here's the hypnose. Did you? Say, I, I had it written down there. Do you, is it written down in yours? Hypnose. Those of you that can read hypnose, say it down there. Say, I didn't even write it on the board, but need to. Yeah. Why ya chalom, we hene, salam, matsav, atsa, we rosha, ma gia, ha sha ma ye ma. We hene, ma la ke. Elohim, Olem, we yah redeem, boo. All right. And he kept on dreaming. He kept on being in a hypnotic trance. And behold, wehene, a ladder, salam, a ladder, being placed, stood, and fixed. Ask in the senior hotel participle. A ladder being placed and stood and fixed. Artsa on earth and its head reaching. Ask in the senior hotel participle reaching to the heavens. <coughs> and behold, Malaki, Malaki, angels. Well, we got our word angels right out of the Greek word angelos. What is angelos? What is that word? What does it mean? Angelos. That's it right there. Angelos. When you have two gammas, it turns into A N G E L. Angels. What does it mean? Messengers. Messengers. He saw messengers. Messengers. This morning we talked about uh, angels. We talked about guardian angels this morning. How that guardian angels constantly report to God your safety and whereabouts. Back and forth to God. This is it. These are the guardian angels. He had guardian angels there. This is what we call Jacob's ladder. That he saw the ladder. But in the book of Matthew... The 18th chapter today, we saw that, that guardian angels are constantly watching over God's little ones. And they're constantly going back into God, reporting to God their safety. All right? It's head reaching unto the heavens. And behold, angels, these Malachi, angels of God. Elohim. Olim. Ascending and we Yah Radim. Ascending and descending upon it. Boo. Now we have angels going up and down, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Guardian angels that are blessing and making sure that Abraham, uh, the, the promise of Abraham, Abrahamic, the Abrahamic covenant would be passed on. You and I are part of the Abrahamic covenant, by the way. That Abrahamic covenant was first established with the woman in the garden. The woman sent it. The woman in the garden. Not the man, but the woman in the garden. 
when God says to Satan, you and her seed will have active hatred. Your seed will be striking him a blow, but her seed will be crushing your head and destroying you. All right? The woman. Wehene, the var. Nitzah, Allah, Wyomer. Ani, the var. Elohi, Avraham, Avika, we Elohi. Yitchik, Haaretz, Asher, Ata, Shoken, Aliha, Lika. Et ti nena. Ulezarika. And behold, Jehovah. This is the bar. This is the word. Jehovah, the word. Okay. This is John 1 and 1. John 1, 14. This is who this is. And behold, Jehovah standing. Masculine, Lysine, or Nephal, participle. By him. Jehovah is standing beside him, and Wyomer, and he says, and he kept on saying, I, Jehovah. Remember what Jesus said in John the 8th chapter, and John the 10th chapter in the New Testament? Before Abraham was, I am. Here he is right here. This is Jesus right here. I, Jehovah. God. He is Jehovah God. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rafika. He is Jehovah Roe. He is the Lord our physician. He is the Lord our shepherd. I, Jehovah God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac, the land which you are lying upon her, the land which you are lying upon her, the land is feminine. Lika, to you I shall keep on giving her. And to your seed I shall keep on giving her. Basically, it's talking about the same thing. To you and to your seed I'll keep on giving to her. Now God is confirming the Abrahamic promise. Jacob sold or bought Esau's birthright from him. He bought it from him because Esau was a glutton. And then later on, when Isaac was going to go ahead and bless Esau instead of Jacob, because he was the one that had the birthright now, God interceded. God had to blind Isaac and and he had Rebekah over here, what Isaac had told Esau, and he said, get in there, go out there and get, uh, get, bring me two little female goats. I'm going to dress them. They're going to be tender, and he's going to love this, and I'm going to fix his favorite food, and he's going to eat it, and he's going to intensely bless you and your seed from now on. Let's get it done before Isaac, or Esau, that is, gets back. We hayah, zaraka, kaafar, haaretz, ufaratz sa, yama, we kedima, wetsa fona, wa negba, we nevraku, viku, kal mishfihat. That's the word. That word chat. That's that you gotta go click your tonsils as you do that. Mish pi chat ha adama uv zarika and uh, shall have become your seed like dust. Dust, fine dust. You know, I <coughs> Cindy, you've been to my house. You're, I guess you're the only one that's been in my house. The rest of you. Would have not been seen fit to come out there and look at me <laughs> in my natural setting. <laughs> All right. Out there I have lots of dust. Every week I get on the tractor and I move dirt because I got more than I need. 
and in that dust is a lot of gold flour. I can go out there and I can see the gold flour in it. But I'm going to tell you something. It's real gold. But and have you ever panned gold flour? If you get an ounce of gold flour, you've worked a hard, hard job. I keep moving that fine gold flour and dust and dumping it in the dumpster and they haul it off and they haul it off and more of it blows in with these 100 and something mile an hour winds. I know what dust looks like. How many of you have been, been over at Pismo Beach? Anybody Pismo Beach? Have you ever been to Pismo Beach sand dunes when the wind is blowing? And all that dust is moving and it moves lots of dirt. That's like my front yard and my backyard. That's the way it is. Dust. Jacob's seed would be like that. Would be like this dust. He'd have many, many children. Just think about now from this period of time to this day how many literal sons of Jacob there have been like dust <laughs> like dust running out of voice here your seed shall become like dust dry earth ka'afar dry earth that can blow in the, how many of you ever seen a, a dust devil what do you call over that or what do you call those Dust devils. My my stepfather used to call them Texas dust fits. All of these little dust devils. Horrors of the earth, like dry dust, dry earth of the earth, and you shall spread out. You shall spread out. You fall rot stop. You shall spread out west. Look at there. You shall spread out to the sea. And you shall spread out to the east, to the rising of the sun. And to the north, we et sa fona, and to the north, and to the south. To the negma, to the south. We never raku, and shall bless themselves in you all of the families all of the families mish fi kot all of the families all of the tribes all the patria the paterfamilia shifoth now on Genesis uh, uh, Gesenius that is on page 734 it talks about this this literally means the, the semen your semen that's what it literally means your seed the father of a family is a patriarch the paterfamilia in Latin the patriarch is the one where the seed came from. That's what this term means, literally, from Hebrew. <coughs> from the uh, pour out all of the families of the ground of the ha Adama, of the whole earth, the populated world, okay, in your seed. And if you did a DNA study on anybody in this room, you will probably find out that you are probably literally one of Abraham's seed. Abraham had three wives, remember. He had a Hamite, a Shemite, and a Japhethite. And if you trace your DNA, you will find out it goes right back to Abraham. You're one of them. Nearly every person in the world is in some way related literally to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob. 28 verse 15. Wehene, Anoki, Imak, Yushimar Tika, Bikol, Asher, Telek, Wahashibotika, El Haadama, Hazot, Ki, Lo, E. Zavika Ad Asher Im Asiti Et Asher Deberti Lak And behold, we hene, I, Anoki, with you. Who's, who's speaking? 
Jehovah. Jehovah God is, I am with you, and I shall guard you. I shall keep on guarding you. I shall keep watch over you. I shall be your shepherd. Look at that. I shall do all of these things. I shall watch over you. I shall guard you. And I shall be your shepherd. And in uh, Psalm 23, it's David's idea of heaven was Jehovah watching over him as his shepherd, as he watched over sheep. And in John the 10th chapter, it tells us, that's Psalm 23 in the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the good Jehovah Roth, Jehovah Roe, I am the good shepherd. And I shall guard you and I shall watch over every need that you have in every place which you may walk, which you may keep on walking. Second person masculine, the singer, cowl, and perfect. Which you shall keep on walking. And uh, I shall return you back unto the land. Ha'adama, the this, because not, I shall let you loose. Because I will keep on not letting you loose. I shall keep on not letting you loose. I will hold on your hand. There was a song, Hold on to God's un what? Unchanging hand, hold on to God's unchanging hand. We don't have to hold on to God's hand. God holds on to our hand. He's the big hand holding our little hands. Until, odd, until which, if I shall have made or done, shall have made or perfected, at which I have spoken to you. This teaches that God has an unbreakable link between him and his loved ones and that angels, our guardians and messengers, are always there protecting and leading us in God's pathways. I said, look here in Kyle and DeLeach, volume 1, page 280 through 83, which I did not bring it tonight. I apologize for that. I was going to read that to you. Jacob promised God if he would protect him that he would be his God and that Jacob would set upon the altar there a tithe of all that he had to Elohim when God's people get saved they give when God becomes your savior he also owns your pocketbook all right And he kept on waking up. He stayed awake, Jacob. Why, Yikots. Yaakov. Mishinota. Why, Yomer. Akin. Yesh. And then we have the word Devar, or Jehovah. Ba Makom. Haze. Wianoki. Lo. Yada Eti. And he awoke and stayed awake, Jacob, from sleep, from hypnose. All right? That word hypnose, from this hypnose. And he said, and he kept on saying, Surely is Jehovah in this place. Surely is Jehovah in this place. The this, and I not, I have known. All right. Jehovah is in this place. And this is what we call the gate of heaven, heaven's gate. The gate of heaven or heaven's gate. This is where he saw the gate of heaven to the throne room of heaven itself. In our class this morning in Matthew, the uh, 18th chapter, we saw that God said that he, he has his angels from his throne room, passing from his throne room on that Jacob's ladder from this earth, watching over his children. And Jacob said, now I know, I see what's really going on. He got to look into a different dimension. There are many dimensions. We live in a, what we call what, a three-dimensional world, pretty much. But they say there's probably ten dimensions. Cindy, you know anything about that since you're a, you're a science teacher? I know it exists, but I don't understand it. Yeah, we know it exists. It has to do with time and space. That's right. We know that even the speed of light is not constant now, that it varies. You say about the, I mean, some people you say, well, speed of light is what we measure everything by. 
but we know that it even varies just a little bit. And we know that really there is such a thing as time travel, but really it maybe it's not time will tra it's not so much time travel, but dimension travel. You travel from one dimension to another. We look up here on this map up there, we see that God's the ages laid out. In the Bible in eight ages we see a great big circle, and in that circle is this a marked off piece of time from eternity to eternity. When you die, do you immediately go to heaven and you're rewarded right into the presence of God? That's a dumb question. Well, that's something. Okay. But how do we know, okay, if there was a beginning, uh -huh. and at least one more beginning, uh -huh. how do we know if you there was not another beginning? I mean, besides the eternity, but how do we know there's not another beginning? Another beginning. Yeah. In like another earth beginning. How do we know that? Or do we? We don't. Okay. But... Knowing the nature of God, what nature of God, I don't think he's wanting to die and come into space a hundred times and go through the cross of Calvary. I think one time that he did this, one time he made one devil. <laughs> Actually, he didn't make the devil, did he? The devil became the devil. He made Lucifer, and Lucifer became Satan and the devil. One time. Do you think that, do you think God want to do this again? Oh, yes. But has he made it so that all the people are going to heaven, that none of them can turn away and none of them can start their own? I mean, has he made it that way, that there can never be another Lucifer situation? Oh, I don't think there will ever be another situation. I think that in the end, uh, in eternal ages, that we will be with God. And that uh, the, his bride will be with him. Israel will have a place. Uh, we will have a new name describing what we've done in this world. Like, see, see this morning, you should have been here in the class this morning. We did all this stuff. Okay. We'll have a new name that will follow us throughout all eternity. He'll give us a name like uh, Gopher <laughs> or Lazy or, or maybe uh, Speedy Gonzalez or maybe Faithful. All the, you know, uh, John Bunyan wrote a book Pilgrim's Progress. It talks a lot about that. He had a lot of insight. But in the end, there will be that. And it'll be, I believe it's going to be a universe that is filled and populated. And I think the whole universe will be knowing the knowledge of God for the next billions of years. How long will it take you to catch up with the knowledge of God and where to learn? I, even if you don't have a limited knowledge. I, when I was young, I had a real high IQ. I don't know why. That's inherited, you know. I could remember anything and everything that I ever studied. I could remember every book I ever read and what page something was on. All of this stuff. I mean, I quote the little pages, you know, about different things here. But... Uh, you see all of this. But one of these days, everybody is going to be like that. Everybody is going to have this unlimited amount of memory. Where for now on, you, for all eternity, you'll be learning how God made an amoeba and how he made a jellyfish and how he made all these things. This will go on and on and on and on. Yeah. And then he, he just talks to a bunch of people. Yeah. And then you get to talk to Moses and you get to talk to Abraham and you get to talk to the Won't it be something? The angels, you get to talk to yeah. the angels and talk to them and find out what it's really mm -hmm. like. And the spirits. And so you just do that forever. Yeah. And maybe how, what happened with the three Hebrew children? Abraham will tell us the whole story. All of this. You'll get to see all of this. And how God did everything. Do you think that we're ever going to run out of something to do doing all of that? <laughs> you're not going to get tired, are you? Not going to get tired of learning. You're not going to get tired of, of running and, and just flying from one end of the universe to the other and say, look how far that Satan threw this planet out here. You know, we talk about the explosion 
when God spoke forth things into existence, how it exploded from him and went out. And they say it's going to go out there. This is what the scientists say. It's going to go out there so far, and then it's going to start coming back together. And I think when that coming back together is business is what we're talking about when everything goes back together. And we get to look at all this stuff. Bethel, the gate of heaven. Are you ready to quit? Yes, uh, uh, Chris. Yeah. Well, God made space. He made space before he did anything. Miracle, material. Just think, he had to make all that space. He made it. And maybe all of it's in the mind of God. Just blows you away. Maybe it's all, maybe it's all like one great big mind. Maybe we're living in the mind of God. Maybe we are his thoughts that are materialized. Whew. Stuff. Stuff. I mean, this, you can all speculate. And, and all Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. You know, remember, that's Einstein's theory of relativity. Everything is energy. Nothing ever ceases being. It's energy. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. J. Lewis Guthrie. Dr. J. Lewis Guthrie used to tell to his students and try to explain them atomic energy. Now, this was before the atomic bomb was ever made or anything. He was talking to his students trying because he was a physicist and a genius in Bible languages. And he would sit there trying to tell them these things. That's where this uh, Christ in creation and the creation of the heavens and the earth. If you go to the website, uh, discover the word discover the word with Dr. Jim over on the left hand side you'll see J. Lewis Guthrie the creation of the heavens and the earth and you'll see all these different things his writing you can download and read that read the mind of a physicist and how God created the spirit God held all things in solution until he spoke it into existence and exploded from him talks about things like that we We'll start at 28.17 next week, the Lord willing, and allows me another week to live. I want to teach this book of Genesis. I'd like to teach the whole thing. The, the, it, you know, you, there's a lot here. This is the tenth, isn't it? All right. Thank you for your endurance of those hard seats. And... Uh, Thank you for coming here. I pray that God will bless you with his word. Go out and do something eternal. Sharon, uh, would you dismiss this in prayer, please? All of you. We might. We we were even going to get into this the stone of scone, but we'll do that next week. How many of you know what that is? Anybody want that the stone of scone is? You know what it is, Cindy. You know what the stone of scone is? All right. Then I have to. It's a new revelation to all of you guys. All right, maybe. All right. God bless you.
love their own thing. Don't get a scoundrel. He didn't love them at all. But he died for us. He died for all man. We will yeah, never be thrown into hell because Jesus didn't die for them. 